Did you get the text at 3.33 a.m.? Scary Story, published by Scare Fiction. Chapter 1, The Mysterious Message. The night was silent, save for the distant hum of city life and the occasional rustle of leaves in the wind. Four seemingly unrelated individuals leading ordinary lives were about to be thrust into a nightmarish reality they never imagined. Emma, a college student with a penchant for late-night study sessions, sat hunched over her textbooks in her dimly lit apartment. The clock on her wall ticked away the minutes, nearing the dreaded hour of 3.33 a.m. As the final moments approached, her phone buzzed with an unsettling intensity. A chill ran down her spine as she picked up the device. The screen illuminated with an eerie glow, revealing a text message from an unknown sender. The message was simple, yet ominous. Did you get the text at 3.33 a.m.? No sender name, no context, just those haunting words. Unnerved, Emma glanced at her clock. It was exactly 33 a.m. She brushed it off as a bizarre coincidence and assumed it was a prank from one of her friends. Still, a lingering unease settled in her stomach. Meanwhile, across town, James, a middle-aged accountant, tossed and turned in his bed. Sleep had eluded him, and the dim glow of his phone on the nightstand caught his attention. He picked it up, squinting at the sudden brightness. The same message stared back at him. Did you get the text at 3.33 a.m.? His heart raced, and a sense of foreboding crept over him. Who could be sending such a peculiar message at this hour? James pondered, his mind racing with unanswered questions. In a different neighborhood, Sarah, a nurse working the night shift, took a break in the hospital break room. The familiar buzz of her phone echoed through the quiet space. She glanced at the screen, and her tired eyes widened with surprise. The mysterious message repeated itself, causing a shiver to run down her spine. Simultaneously, Mark, an aspiring artist, was engrossed in his work in a small studio apartment. The flickering light of his computer screen illuminated the room. At 3.33 a.m., his concentration was shattered by the ping of a new message. The words on the screen sent a chill down his spine, mirroring the experience of the others. As the clock struck 3.34 a.m., the four individuals found themselves connected by a bizarre and inexplicable event. A sense of unease lingered in the air, and a silent agreement formed among them. They needed to unravel the mystery behind the haunting message that had disrupted their lives. Little did they know that this was only the beginning, and the true horrors awaiting them would transcend the boundaries of their ordinary existence. The ominous text had set in motion a series of events that would plunge them into a nightmarish journey, binding their fates together in ways they could never have anticipated. Chapter 2 Unsettling Events Unfold The sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the city. As nightfall descended, the four individuals, Emma, James, Sarah, and Mark, found themselves entangled in a web of unnerving events that defied explanation. Emma, still haunted by the mysterious message, began noticing subtle changes in her surroundings. Shadows seemed to dance in the corners of her vision, and an inexplicable coldness permeated the air. Each night, as the clock approached, 3.33 a.m., her apartment echoed with strange whispers that seemed to originate from the very walls themselves. James, typically composed and rational, discovered his meticulously organized files in disarray. Important documents vanished without a trace, leaving him baffled and increasingly paranoid. He couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, especially during the late hours when the world outside his window fell into an eerie silence. Sarah, on her night shifts at the hospital, experienced flickering lights, malfunctioning equipment, and unsettling shadows that seemed to defy the laws of physics. Patients' monitors occasionally displayed erratic patterns, 
At the precise moment, the clock struck 3.33 a.m. The once familiar hospital corridors now felt like a labyrinth of uncertainty. In his art studio, Mark's canvases came to life with nightmarish images. The subjects in his paintings seemed to move when he wasn't looking, their eyes following him across the room. The boundaries between his artistic creations and reality blurred, leaving him questioning his own sanity. As the group began to share their experiences, a common thread emerged each unsettling event coincided with the haunting hour of 3.33 a.m. They gathered in Emma's apartment, a makeshift headquarters to unravel the mystery that bound them together. With a sense of urgency, they compared notes and discovered the synchronicity of their encounters. The ominous messages they had received were not isolated incidents, but part of a larger, malevolent scheme. The realization left them with a chilling certainty that they were being targeted by a force beyond their understanding. Determined to confront the growing darkness, they decided to conduct a makeshift seance. Candles flickered as they sat in a circle. Their hands joined and whispered pleas for answers into the void. The room grew colder and the air thickened with an otherworldly energy. Suddenly, a voice echoed through the room, a spectral whisper that seemed to emanate from the very walls. It spoke in riddles, hinting at a shared past and a malevolent force that sought retribution. The room quivered with unseen forces as the message concluded with a bone-chilling warning they were not alone, and the entity that tormented them hungered for something beyond their understanding. As the clock struck 3.33 a.m., the seance room plunged into darkness, leaving the group trembling in the wake of a supernatural revelation. The unsettling events had only just begun, and the true nature of their shared past loomed ominously on the horizon. Chapter 3. The Connection In the aftermath of the chilling seance, the group of four individuals, bound by the mysterious messages and supernatural occurrences, delved into their pasts to uncover the threads that connected them. Late-night gatherings in Emma's apartment became a ritual, a desperate attempt to make sense of the ominous force that had invaded their lives. As they compared memories and shared fragments of their personal histories, a revelation unfolded. The group had attended the same college several years ago, their lives intersecting in ways that had long been forgotten. It was during their college days that a fateful event occurred, an event buried deep in their collective subconscious. Through hesitant recollections and shared nightmares, they pieced together the story of a forbidden ritual they had unknowingly participated in. The details were obscured, shrouded in the haze of suppressed memories, but the consequences of that night had returned to haunt them. The ritual, conducted on a dark and stormy night, had invoked an otherworldly presence. A malevolent force, hungry for souls and revenge, had been unleashed upon them. The group's collective amnesia had spared them the horrors of their past, but now the entity sought retribution, pulling them back into its nightmarish grasp. Haunted by the echoes of their actions, the group realized that breaking free from the entity's clutches required them to confront their shared past head-on. With newfound determination, they sought out old college records, yearbooks, and any remnants of that ominous night. In a dusty archive room at the college, they stumbled upon an old journal belonging to a forgotten student. The journal detailed the forbidden ritual, its purpose, and the dark entity that lurked in the shadows. The pages seemed to writhe with an unholy energy as they read the incantations and witness the sketches of grotesque figures that matched their nightmares. The connection was now clear. Their past actions had bound them to a malevolent force, and the text messages at 3.33 a.m. were a cruel reminder of the entity's ceaseless pursuit. As the group delved deeper into their shared history, the supernatural occurrences escalated. Ghostly figures appeared in mirrors, and spectral whispers filled the air. 
The entities seemed to feed on their fear, growing stronger with each passing night. In a desperate bid to sever the ties to their dark past, they embarked on a journey to retrace the steps of the forbidden ritual. The college campus, once familiar, now exuded an ominous energy as they navigated through the same locations they had visited that fateful night. At the heart of the ritual site, the group prepared themselves for a final confrontation. The air crackled with tension as they recited incantations to banish the malevolent force. Shadows danced around them, and the clock inexorably ticked toward 3.33 a.m. As the final words left their lips, the surroundings trembled. The entity, now fully manifest, confronted them in a grotesque display of supernatural power. The group stood united, facing the embodiment of their collective sins, determined to break free from the clutches of the dark force that had tormented them for far too long. Chapter 4 The Haunting With the incantations echoing through the darkened ritual site, the group braced themselves for the impending confrontation with the malevolent force. The air thickened as the clock neared the dreaded hour of 3.33 a.m. Shadows danced around them, and an otherworldly energy pulsed through the night. The entity, now fully materialized, emerged from the shadows. Its form, twisted and contorted, a grotesque embodiment of their shared past. Chorus of ghostly whispers surrounded them as the entity unleashed its supernatural wrath. The group, standing united against the encroaching darkness, felt the weight of their collective guilt pressing down upon them. The entity, fueled by their fear and remorse, taunted them with visions of their past misdeeds. Each member of the group saw glimpses of the forbidden ritual, the faces of those they had wronged, and the consequences that had been set in motion. As the clock struck 3, 33 a.m., the ritual site became a battleground between the group and the malevolent force. Ghostly apparitions manifested, reaching out with ethereal hands. The air was charged with an unholy energy, and the surroundings seemed to warp and twist. Sarah, haunted by the guilt of her actions, saw the ghostly figures of patients she had failed to save during the ritual. James, tormented by the consequences of his misplaced priorities, witnessed the accusing gazes of those he had betrayed. Emma and Mark, burdened by their own sins, faced spectral reflections of their deepest fears. In the midst of the supernatural onslaught, the group clung to the incantations, their voices trembling but resolute. The entity, sensing the vulnerability of its prey, intensified its efforts to break their spirits. It whispered dark secrets, exploiting their insecurities and regrets. Yet, as the group faced the relentless onslaught, a glimmer of determination shone through. They drew strength from each other, finding solace in the shared struggle against the malevolent force. With renewed resolve, they chanted the incantations louder, drowning out the ghostly whispers. The ritual site quaked with supernatural energy, and the entity wailed in agony. Shadows recoiled, and the air crackled with tension. The group, their eyes fixed on the grotesque manifestation before them, pushed forward with unwavering determination. In a final crescendo of otherworldly phenomena, the entity let out a deafening roar. The ritual site erupted in blinding light, and the group felt a surge of energy as if the very fabric of reality was being rewritten. As the light subsided, they found themselves standing in the aftermath of the supernatural maelstrom. The malevolent force had been banished, and the ritual site lay silent and still. The haunting hour of 3.33 a.m. passed, leaving a profound stillness in its wake. The group, physically and emotionally drained, surveyed the transformed ritual site. The shadows that had once clung to the corners of their vision retreated, and an eerie calm settled over the once haunted grounds. The malevolent force had been vanquished, and the group, 
forever changed by the ordeal, faced the uncertain aftermath of their battle with the supernatural. Chapter 5 As dawn broke, casting a feeble light over the once-tormented ritual site, the group gathered in a solemn silence. The air felt lighter, and the shadows that had once clung to them seemed to dissipate. However, an air of uncertainty hung over them as they confronted the aftermath of their harrowing ordeal. The group, now bound by a shared trauma, sought solace in each other's presence. The ritual had not only banished the malevolent force, but had also exposed the raw emotions and vulnerabilities they had long suppressed. In the eerie calm of the morning, they found a newfound connection a bond forged in the crucible of the supernatural. Yet, the journey was far from over. The group knew that the malevolent force could return if they failed to address the root of their shared past. Determined to unravel the remaining mysteries, they turned their attention to the journal they had discovered in the college archives. Within its aged pages, they found references to a forgotten pact made during the ritual, a binding agreement that connected their souls to the malevolent force. The entity, hungry for revenge, had sought to perpetuate its malevolence through the guilt and remorse of the group. Realizing the gravity of their situation, the group resolved to break the remaining ties to the dark entity. Guided by the cryptic instructions in the journal, they embarked on a journey to locate a forgotten relic the key to severing the connection once and for all. Their quest led them to hidden chambers beneath the college, where the air was thick with the residue of ancient rituals. As they navigated the labyrinthine passages, they encountered spectral echoes of the malevolent force, remnants of its once potent influence. The entity, weakened but not defeated, sought to thwart their progress at every turn. The relic, a mysterious artifact imbued with supernatural energy, lay guarded in a chamber at the heart of the subterranean maze. The group, undeterred by the malevolent force's feeble attempts to impede them, approached the relic with caution. As they reached out to touch the artifact, a surge of energy coursed through them. Visions of the ritual, the haunting hour, and the malevolent force flashed before their eyes. The relic absorbed their shared pain and remorse, transforming it into a blinding light that radiated through the underground chambers. The malevolent force, unable to withstand the purification, let out a final echoing cry before dissipating into the ether. The group, now free from the entity's grasp, stood in the chamber, the relic glowing with a subdued energy. With the dark force banished, and the ties severed, the group emerged from the underground chambers into the light of day. The once haunted college campus seemed to exhale a sigh of relief. As they stepped into the sunlight, a sense of closure washed over them. The haunting hour of 3.33 a.m. had lost its malevolent grip, and the group, forever changed by their nightmarish journey, faced an uncertain but hopeful future. The relics of their shared past had been laid to rest, and the bond forged in the crucible of the supernatural would serve as a reminder of their resilience in the face of darkness. Chapter 6 Confrontation and Resolution The group emerged from the underground chambers, the relics' subdued glow fading as they stepped into the sunlight. The malevolent force that had tormented them had been banished, and the haunting hour of 3.33 a.m. felt like a distant nightmare. The college campus, once shrouded in supernatural darkness, now basked in the ordinary light of day. As the group reflected on their journey, a newfound sense of camaraderie and resilience united them. The haunting past that had bound them together had been confronted and, to some extent, conquered. However, the shadows of their shared trauma lingered serving as a reminder of the otherworldly ordeal that had tested their strength. In the days that followed, the group grappled with the aftermath of the supernatural battle. Nightmares 
and residual echoes of the malevolent force haunted their sleep, but they found solace in the collective support they now shared. Late night conversations replaced the once ominous gatherings, and laughter began to echo through the halls of Emma's apartment. Yet, a lingering question remained. Had they truly escaped the clutches of the supernatural, or was the malevolent force merely biding its time? The group, wary but resolute, continued to research ancient texts and paranormal lore, determined to fortify themselves against any potential resurgence. As the weeks passed, the haunting hour of 3.33 a.m. approached with trepidation. Each member of the group faced the ominous moment with a mix of anxiety and anticipation, unsure of whether the malevolent force would return. To their surprise, the clock ticked past 3.33 a.m. without incident, and a collective sigh of relief swept through the group. The respite, however, proved to be short-lived. Strange occurrences, though less malevolent than before, continued to manifest sporadically. Unexplained shadows, eerie whispers, and flickering lights persisted, leaving the group on edge. It became evident that the malevolent force had not been fully vanquished, and the remnants of its influence lingered. Determined to break free from the supernatural shackles once and for all, the group sought guidance from a renowned paranormal expert. The expert, a seasoned investigator of the occult, delved into the group's experiences and the relics of their shared past. What they discovered was a lingering attachment, the malevolent force, though weakened, had left a spiritual residue that clung to the group. In a final confrontation with the paranormal expert, the group underwent a cleansing ritual. The ritual a fusion of ancient incantations and modern metaphysical practices aimed to sever the last ties to the malevolent force. As the ritual unfolded, the group felt a surge of energy, a potent blend of fear and determination. The room resonated with the echoes of their shared trauma, but this time it was met with a collective defiance. The malevolent force resisted, lashing out with residual shadows and ghostly whispers. Yet, the group stood strong, united in their resolve to break free from the supernatural chains. As the ritual reached its climax, the room was bathed in a blinding light. The malevolent force, unable to withstand the purification, dissipated into the ether. The group, finally liberated from the haunting hour and the malevolent force that had bound them, stood in the aftermath, the air now cleansed of the lingering spiritual residue. With the cleansing complete, the group faced the uncertain future with newfound strength and unity. The haunting hour of 3.33 a.m. no longer held power over them, and the malevolent force had been relegated to the shadows of their past. As they walked away from the paranormal expert sanctuary, the weight of the supernatural lifted leaving behind a sense of closure and the promise of a more ordinary existence. The group, forever changed by their journey through the realms of horror and the supernatural, dispersed into the ordinary world, their shared experiences serving as a bond that transcended the boundaries of the extraordinary. The haunting hour had come and gone, but the resilience of the group prevailed, leaving them with a chilling tale to tell and a shared strength that defied the darkness.